Hey everyone, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how groups work in Godot. So as an example, I'm going to create a new 3D scene. And then I'm also going to add a child node to this scene as well. It'll just be a mesh instance. And then I'll add a camera to watch over this mesh instance as well. So basically what we're going to be doing is, as I just said before, I'm going to be showing you guys how groups work in Godot. So you might be thinking to yourself, uh, what do you mean by groups? So if we click onto this mesh instance here, now this can be with any node, I'm just using a mesh instance 3D as an example, but you can do this with any node. So if you click on a node, so this mesh instance for example, and then uh, to the right here you have your inspector menu, if we switch this over to the node tab, and then we switch it to groups, as you can see we now have this menu here. So if you click on the plus to add a new group, uh, you can now enter the name of a group, so this can be anything that you want it to be. So for this example I'm just going to call this Skippity. So you can literally name your group whatever you want it to be. And then uh, as you can see here we also have a toggle for global as well so what this means is this will actually make your group global so i think um if i'm correct uh basically if you don't set this to global then this group will only remain local to whatever scene it's been created in however if you set it to global then it can be used in any scene i'm pretty sure so yeah, we're going to be setting this to global for this tutorial, even though um, it doesn't really matter since it's just going to be all in this scene I'm using anyway, but yeah. But I am going to be setting it to global, and also there's a description here. I've never actually used a description before, but I guess you could, uh, you know, enter a description if you really wanted to as well. Then we can go OK, and boom! So here we have our, uh, our group now. So as you can see, when a mesh is added to a group, it then has this icon next to it uh, on the hierarchy. It's like a square with a circle inside of it. However, if we uncheck the group, now that icon is no longer there. So whenever a, a mesh is, or well, a node, I should say, whenever a node is put into a group, it will then have an icon appear next to it on the hierarchy, showing that it is now in a group. And it also uh, shows what group it is in, if you do hover over that icon as well. So as you can see, it says node is in this group, skippity. Alright, so now that I've shown you guys how to create a group and how to set a node to a group in the, node, in the groups tab here, uh, what we're going to be doing now is we're actually going to be creating a function for our nodes that are in this group. So if I go into my mesh instance 3D for example, so I'm going to switch over to the inspector tab here. Then we go script empty. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an example script. So I'm just going to call this example.gd. And then I'm also going to create a... Well, I already created a scripts folder before uh, off, off, uh, off recording. So we're going to call this example.gd. Go create and boom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these functions here. And I'm going to create an entirely new function for this mesh instance. So I'm going to call it func, uh, and then we can call this anything you want to, so I'm going to call it func interact. And then what's going to happen is we're going to toggle the visibility of this mesh. So it's just going to be a, you know, a quick example function for this tutorial, so what we're going to do is we're going to do visible equals to not visible. So basically uh, what the exclamation mark means is that means not. So basically what we're doing is we are toggling the visibility of the mesh by going visible equals to not visible. So if visible equals to true, then visible will now equal to false. And if visible equals to false, it will now equal to true. So yeah. So anyways, that's going to be our basic function. Uh, we'll also do a print statement as well just to add to it. So we can go print. And then in commas, we can then just print out a statement, something like skippity toilet or something like that. Alrighty, so now that we have our, uh, our func interact, our interact function, what we're going to do now is we are now going to go to the parent node of our scene. Now, um, of course, you can do this in any script uh, that you want to, of course. I'm just using example scripts for this tutorial. But what we can do now is we can go to our, our parent node, for example. I'm going to create a new example script. I'm just going to call this example underscore two. Save it in my scripts folder, there we go, and create. Alright, so what I'm going to do for this tutorial, as an example, is I'm going to get rid of the ready function here, so we're just going to get rid of that, and we're going to be using the process function. So what I've done, 
off, off, off recording is I've gone into my project settings. So go project, project settings, and then I've gone into my input map here. And I decided to just create a new example key called move, which has the A key attached to it. So if you don't know how to add a new action just in case, uh, you can just type in here, add new action. And you can just type in something like skibbity, for example. I know I'm using skibbity toilet as an example a lot, but whatever. And then you can just, you know, click onto the plus icon, then just press a key, and that attaches a key to that action. So yeah, so that's how you do that. But anyways, so as an example for this tutorial, I'm going to make it that whenever we press a key, it's going to call the group, and then it's going to call our interact, interact function that is attached to nodes with the skibbity group. And then what's going to happen is any node with the skibbity group is going to have the interact function happen. So what we can do here is we can do if input dot is action just pressed, move as an example, and then the two dots. And then underneath, and then we can go get underscore tree dot call underscore group skippity. So this will be whatever your group name is, of course. So you can enter in whatever you want there as your group name. And then we do comma. And then this is where we enter in the method, which is our function. In quotations again, we just write interact, since that is my function's name. And that will cause the interact function to happen for any node that has that script attached and also has the skibbity group attached to it as well. So basically what calling groups is good for, right, is let's say for example, you have a lot of nodes in your scene that all have like the same script attached to them and they all have the same like function attached to them as well. Now it doesn't necessarily need to be the same script, it just needs to be the same function. So even if those nodes were in the same group but they had different scripts, as long as they have the same function, I'm pretty sure it should still, you know, be able to call correctly. But anyways, so what uh, calling a group is good for is it's good for not having to like basically make a function happen on every node individually. So let's say for example, as I just said before, you have a bunch of nodes in the scene who are all, which are all part of the same group and then uh, they've all got the same script attached as well. Basically, um, what you might be thinking to yourself is, oh, you know, I'll, I'll have to, you know, call all these nodes uh, individually by going like, you know, mesh instance 3 dinteract and then you might have to, you know, copy and paste that over and over again and then just change the names of the nodes uh, in your script. So you might go mesh instance 3 d 2, 3, 4, 5, you know, whatever the names of your nodes are. But, you know, the good thing about calling a group is you don't have to do that. You know, it just makes it only one line of code. So yeah, that is why calling groups is definitely very efficient and very useful. So that is why I definitely do recommend that if you do have many nodes in your scene, which are all, a part, which are all you know, basically have the same functionality to them. Or if you want to call them all at the same time. So yeah, I do recommend uh, using groups for that. So anyways, now that we have uh, everything ready, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my uh, camera 3D to current here in my 3D scene. And we're actually going to test out this, uh, this scene to see what happens. So as you can see, whenever I press the A key, the cube here goes invisible and visible again. And as you can see here in the console, we have Skibbity Toilet being printed out. So to prove my point about the groups and uh, having many nodes that are in the same group and having the same script or functionality or same function name, uh, what we can do here is we can just like, you know, duplicate this cube. So I'm just going to duplicate this cube around. Also, I am going to add sunlight and uh, environment to the scene as well, just so I can see it better when we're actually testing the game. Alrighty, so here we have a bunch of cubes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go test it out again. And now when I press the A key, boom, as you can see, all of, all of the cubes now, their visibility is changing. And as you can see, we have uh, 10 print statements being printed at a time since we have uh, 10 cubes in this scene now. And all their functions are happening at the same time when I'm pressing the A key. So again, um, you don't even have to do just, you know, the call group function under, you know, pressing a key. You can do it whenever. You can even do it in a ready function. You can, you know, do it whenever you want to. You know, I'm just using a pressing a key as an example for this tutorial. But overall, the main things to take away from this tutorial are creating your groups. So basically, um, you know, when you select a node, you go to your node tab here. You can then uh, add a new group and create a new group. You can set it to global if you want to, if you want it to be, you know, part of, you know, uh, every scene or whatever.
And then the next thing to remember is making sure that you have a script attached to your nodes uh, with, with the same group, of course, so then you can have their function attached to them that you want to happen. And then, uh, basically, uh, whenever you want to, you can then use this line of code here to then call the group name and the function of that group that the script is attached to. And then, boom! Then your function will happen on all of them objects that are attached to the same group. Alright guys, so this is just a little bit that I'm adding in after recording the tutorial. So I was just editing the video before and then I realized to myself, oh wait a second, there's one thing which I wanted to show people which I forgot to show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my example script here, into my interact function. So something about functions is that you can actually uh, put a variable inside of the uh, parentheses here. So if I was to put something like a uh, skibbity text for example, you can enter whatever you want into here, it doesn't really matter. Uh, basically, skibbity text is basically now a variable that is exclusively a part of this function. So what skibbity text is going to be is it is going to be a string, and it's going to be what gets printed out into our print statement here. So for this, I'm just going to do a skibbity text, skibbity underscore text, like that. So now whatever uh, skibbity text in this uh, function equals to, whatever this variable in this function equals to, that is what will be printed out here. So what we can do in our example2 script, so uh, in the call group function here, what we can do is after our interact function, we can now do another comma, and then here is where we can actually uh, put in variables that are going to be used in this function. So if a function of yours requires a variable to be used in it, this is where now you can enter them variables. So I can enter in, so since we're using a string variable for our interact function, I can do quotations here and now I can enter in anything we want to. So if I was to do rar xd for example, and now let's actually go test out the scene. So now whenever I press A, as you can see, uh, not only are the cubes being uh, toggled in terms of their visibility, but we have RARXD being printed out into the console 10 times over since we have, you know, 10 uh, cubes in our scene here. So yeah. So that's just another quick thing which I wanted to show you guys too. Alright, Omegonix back with yet another thing that I want to show you guys before ending this tutorial. So if you ever want to add a node to a group from your script, or if you want to remove a node from a group from your script, that is totally possible. So let's say, for example, in your function you were to do add underscore to group, then what you can do is you can then enter in the group name of what you want to add your node to. So if I was to add this to the skippity group, for example, then you can totally do that. Otherwise, what you can do is you can do remove underscore group, or remove from group I should say, and then you just type in the group name here, and boom, then you can remove a node from a group as well. So there is both adding to a group and removing from a group. So you can totally do that in your script as well. One last thing I'd like to talk about as well is you can also do if is in group. So you can basically check if, an, if a node is in a group as well. So if they are in the group skippity for example, then you could actually, uh, you know, make something happen, like a print statement or whatever sort of function you want to happen if a node is in a particular group. So that is something else which you can do as well. So yeah, hopefully that was all explained correctly. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, because I, I, sometimes I think of myself as not the best at explaining things. But anyways, uh, thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Hopefully you all did learn something from this. Again, groups are pretty cool and they're very efficient to use as well. And I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.